Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's Threat Snapshot. So we're going to be digging into the Move It Transfer software. This is a critical SQL injection that can lead to remote code execution, and it's tracked as CVE 2023-34362. Uh, this vulnerability was disclosed last week, and we've seen wide evidence of exploitation, particularly because there are several of these um, servers that are on the internet. Um, Shodan scan last week showed about 2,500, and many of them have already been actively exploited and have, have ransomware installed on them by the CLOP ransomware gang. So looking at some of the threat intelligence here, um, this is from Huntress. They've done a lot of research on this, so shout out to their team for sharing this and keeping the community um, apprised of all of their progress. If you've been following John Hammond and his tweets, trying to go from creating the um, and you're figuring out reverse engineering that SQL injection to actually getting remote code execution. They do have a video demonstrating that process. They do have an active POC of this. Uh, a couple things to note is again that this software, um, the service account that it is running under is going to be an administrator and it's just one get system away from um, having system privileges. So uh, there is definitely very high risk here. Again, this is partially why the ransomware games have been able to, again, use this to deploy ransomware to, you know, the system and also, you know, move laterally, spread widely. So um, some interesting things to talk about in their intelligence. Again, we are specifically looking at behavioral techniques. So looking at the, you know, the service account, the move it service, looking at some of the shells that they're dropping. So there's this human to web shell um, that's been put in the move it transfer software folder. So that's something that we can detect. Um, we've also seen them um, compile and leave behind a DLL as part of this. Um, so that is uh, using the kind of the built in Windows CSC to build a DLL. So there's some techniques around here. So um, you can see yeah, a little bit more about this uh, DLL uh, disclosed in this intelligence. So if you want to learn more about this, I would definitely check out Huntress's blog post. Um, another great resource for this is obviously going to be um, CISA uh, in a joint report with the FBI. Um, they have identified um, exploitation activity around this vulnerability, specifically from the CLOP ransomware gang. And again, this is a pretty in-depth article that um, gives you some background about CLOP, um, talks about um, some of the tools that they're using. Again, that uh, C-sharp web shell that we've talked about also being um, referred to as lemur loot. Um, you can see, again, what's vulnerable. They have some um, YAR rules if you want to detect that. And then they also break it down into some IOCs and uh, MITRE attack techniques at the bottom of uh, evidence that they've seen here used. So definitely worth checking this out as well. Um, if your meme game is strong, I think every vulnerability should have a meme. Um, Thanks again from Huntress for the I like to move it, move it. So uh, there you go. Um, let's pivot on over to Snap Attack now. So um, should preface this, we do not have a full uh, POC available, but um, when there is an absence of a POC, how do we like to go about um, you know, validating our detections? And also why do we go about validating our detections? Um, it's very easy to read a threat intelligence report kind of look at a specific behavior, you know, put your thumb into the wind and say, yeah, I think that's what's going to be, you know, seen in the event logs. You could create a detection, you could run it across your data lake, you see zero results and you, you know, pat yourself on the back thinking, hey, awesome, this isn't in my network, uh, I can rest easy. And, you know, sometimes that is the case, but a lot of times, um, again, maybe the threat intelligence was incomplete because, again, they hadn't seen, you know, the full artifacts of the exploitation activity. Perhaps there's a logic syntax error. Maybe there's you know log visibility and log coverage issues. So we always like to detect and you know emulate the threat as best as we can, ideally with the actual um, exploit, the actual ransomware, the actual tools. Um, in this case, we're able to at least validate the TTPs that are being used based on the intel. So we do have recommended detections for here, and we'll kind of show you that approach. So. On the Windows machine, um, we've got, again, this is a, a server. We've got IIS installed. Um, you have the uh, actual Move It software installed. If you can get a trial, you can have that set up. Um, if not, you could just as easily kind of configure it similarly with the Move It service account and um, setting up the application pool. 
again, probably easier and safer to use their installer because that's going to configure everything in that way and it's more likely to mirror what you would see here. So again, this is one of the benefits of Snap Attack is that you know we have this you know cyber range environment where you can test these you know highly malicious things, validate them, your detections in this proving ground, and then you have more confidence when you deploy them to your, your network. So we have um, the Windows victim here, we have the Kali attacker. So again, we have our kind of pseudo exploitation script here that we are going to run. Um, this is going to upload and transfer the back door. So that's going to drop that human to web shell. Again, they would be using the SQL injection and um, you know doing some other activity to turn that in. And then we're also going to you know use that backdoor to um, again compile and leave that DLL artifact. So we can see some of these techniques here. Again, we can see our detections and the ones that validate. Um, this is also again interesting activity on the process graph view. So um, you know W3W. Again, that's our IIS service. Um, so that's running under SVC host. Um, we can see some of the user activity. So this is running in a high integrity context level. Um, this is also running under the context of the, the Move It service. And you can see here that this is, again, launching the CSC to compile um, that DLL. So there is definitely, again, if you're looking at you know, process creation events, you know, weird uh, parent-child relationships, um, chances are W3W3 spawning CSC is going to be bad, and that would be a very good detection strategy along with some of the others. So typical snap attack fashion, let's pivot over. How would I hunt for this? How would I detect this? How would I see if there's any sort of activity like this in my network? So a couple of different approaches here. So this one is, again, looking at that process pattern. So um, we can see here with um, W3WP, we chose to also look and scope this to the move at DMZ. Um, again, you could also look for weird child processes, so CSCs, PowerShells, CMD.EXEs, other things. Uh, we have evergreen detections like that in our library, but this one, again, we we're trying to scope a little bit more specifically around, um, you know, this move it uh, application. So just as easily, if, if you didn't want to work on the command line, you could do the move it service account. Um, again, remembering that this is running in a high integrity level context. So this is definitely something very interesting and makes it easy for an attacker for post exploitation attacks. So um, again, this is a validated detection that you can use. Um, another one possible move it web shell. So this is looking at a file creation event. So Again, this is going to vary a little bit because um, organizations can change where files are going to be stored. So, um, you know, this one we left off the, the parent drive because we've seen it installed on, you know, not just C, but D or E or other directories. Um, so this one may need a little bit of tweaking, but you can see um, looking in the move it transfer folder, the web root, and we're looking for really any ASPX files that are being launched or, or, or dropped. Um, again, there might be some interesting things here to see is this dropped by like an administrator account with an installer or is this dropped by the move it service account. So there might be some context and things to see here, but generally speaking, anything that's being put in, you know, a web route um, is probably going to be a backdoor web shell. So this is something that, again, you could take a look at for possible exploitation activity. Um, speaking of web shells, so this one is quite interesting. Um, one of the novel ways that it communicates is using some HTTP headers. Um, so it's using this X uh, SI lock comment and step command and using these in combination. So um, if you have, you know, bro or Zeek data, you can take a look and see if you see web traffic that, you know, contains these headers um, that could be evidence of possible exploitation activity. Um, again, with the, these sort of attacks, a lot of times, like, this is technically a zero day, so you sometimes often wonder, you know, how could we have prevented this? You know, there was no sort of way. And the beauty of behavioral detections, and um, again, I know this one is, is newer, but again, is something that you could deploy. And it's always fun to watch and see when you write a, behavior, a new behavioral detection, see what old, you know, threats it's captured on. So this one here was written, again, based on we're looking for, you know, that compiled DLL that's going to be located in, you know, that folder with the specific like web app and then the random characters. So um, based on that threat intel report, we're able to see like, yep, if I'm using CSC to compile um, that DLL, this is going to be placed here again with some of those random strings. Um, but looking at some of our other threats, so we've seen proxy shell. 
Uh, we've seen some other uh, apps. So this is a Screen Connect um, attack that's uh, using that. So um, again, this is sort of a behavior where, again, if I have this installed um, and this detection deployed, chances are the next time there's some sort of zero day that's going to use this technique, again, using W3WP or some other web server to install and create these files, this could be a good way to detect that. So definitely, again, another strong reason why you want to have some behavioral detections in your arsenal. And again, these are also very good for threat hunting. Um, there's one other detection I think we'll call to. Um, this is from Costas. It's a community rule. Um, this one I know has been shared quite widely. Um, using a similar um, kind of detection strategy, he was looking for csc.exe, again, from um, W3WP, and looking at the you know parent command line. So is this part of that move it pool DMZ? So um, eliminate some of the questions or concerns about like the randomization of the file names, but this is kind of noted here and that it's going to write into this folder and again has some random randomization there. So you could see, you know, evidence of those. So this is again another validated detection that you could, you know, deploy into your, you know, environments. So what happens if I see evidence of this activity in my network and now I need to move to remediation? So I'm going to pass that off to our partner Mandiant. Um, they have a really good blog post talking about some of their analysis and uh, most importantly here there is this uh, move it containment and hardening guide that they released. So this is a 32 page document that goes over a lot of those um, kind of remediation steps and best practices um, as well as a little bit of analysis. So um, usual things that we would say is, again, there is a patch available, so if you can patch these servers, that's going to be your best bet. Uh, the vendor is also recommended in the interim, if you can't patch it, that you should um, at least, you know, put up a firewall rule to block AD and 443, knowing that that is effectively going to disable use of that. Um, again, maybe you keep this scoped only to your internal network instead of having it on the internet, um, but obviously there's going to be some concerns there. Um, and again, they've talked through in this report how to do, again, containment, investigation. Um, again, this is a ransomware gang where they are known to, you know, exfiltrate information and then use that extortion method. So um, wanting to know, you know, what files were, you know, pulled from this, um, you can check the move it logs and you can see evidence of that. So there is a lot of good information in this guide. And if you unfortunately are having to deal with the cleanup of this, I would definitely check that out. So anyways, that's our snapshot for this week. It's a weekly series. Like, subscribe, comment below the video, and we'll see you next time.